All right. So, uh, everybody, thank you so much for making the time to chat with us this evening. I know probably not the most exciting thing in the world to do on a Wednesday evening, but I promise we're going to keep this uh, 30 minutes or less, uh, provide some value for you, introduce really why mental skills training should be so important for your soccer career, and then also introduce you to a, a world champion, a four-time Olympic uh, athlete, and my brother Milo Kavik, who's going to really walk you through his own experience of how he he's used mental skills training uh, to really reach the top of the world. So, uh, Bree, if you wouldn't mind, there we go. Uh, for all of you that do not recognize this uh, coach, you should. She's a two-time World uh, World Cup champion coach, and really why I'm bringing this up, and perhaps some of you already know this but mental training needs to be just as important as physical training. And obviously her quote resonates far more because she's been at the top. She's coached the best athletes in the world. Uh, but really what kind of brought uh, together with Stoic and why we've built this is because this shouldn't just be reserved for the world champions. This shouldn't be just for professional athletes because you as, as athletes, whether you're 13, 16, 18, whatever the case might be, you have ambitions, you wanna to get to the highest level, you wanna perform at your best. And really that's the primary reason why we built for Stoic. And Brie, if you wouldn't mind going to the next slide. And so who is Ristoic? And that kind of answers that. Uh, we have a three-pronged approach with the understanding that everything you do as an athlete, hopefully you all understand why you're doing this, uh, why you're committed to your sport, what you're trying to achieve. And you know, going into it, we are a tech-based solution. And so for all of you, you probably have your phone with you 95% of your time. Why not do something incredibly productive with it, which is what we've created with the mobile app, Ristoic. Uh, this is encompassing the five most important skills within performance psychology. So this isn't just me talking about it, but rather uh, leading sports psychologists, top athletes, which you'll hear shortly, how they use self-talk techniques to reframe. And so, I bring this up because uh, obviously with COVID, challenges have been huge for coaches, for athletes, really for everybody. But I wanna make a big point of emphasis that all of you have the right mentality going into this. So instead of saying, why is this happening to me? Let's shift that into what can I learn from this? So there are little tips and tricks that we're gonna to touch upon, but really the five biggest skills that I want you all to recognize right now, and the app will as well teach you that, self-talk, goal setting, concentration, imagery, and relaxation. And so aside from our app, we also have a nationwide network of certified mental performance coaches, meaning that all of you, I know the app is gonna give you all the tools you need, but at the same token, no two athletes are the same. If you're looking for a more customized approach, our nationwide network actually produces uh, expert coaching via Zoom. Uh, we know that a lot of this is telehealth, a lot of it's mobile-based. And again, you're in front of your, your phone anyway. Why not be coached by an expert? And then finally, our third one is Restoic for Teams, which I will be talking with your coaches at some point, hopefully in the near future, about how to implement this as a program for the entire team. Uh, meaning that, yes, you're going to get full access to the app, but you're also going to get weekly activities as a team. You're going to get worksheets. Uh, you're going to do discussion points. You're gonna have chat features, everything that's really encompassing the right environment. Because as a team, I hope you all know that, yes, you're doing the weightlifting, yes, you're doing the sprint works, yes, you're doing the technical drills. But if you want that competitive advantage, you need to take it a step further. And really that's why we've created this holistic approach to helping you guys out, girls as well, uh, with being the best soccer players you can be but not just that, being the best students, being the best people, really helping you channel the best version of yourself. Uh, Brie, if you wouldn't mind going into the next slide. So there are two activities that we're really gonna cover today before we uh, introduce you to the guest speaker. The first one, there are three types of goals. I hope all of you, if you're not doing it, change it immediately. You need to be doing goals. You need to have goal setting as a big part of your training. Um, in case you can't see it on that, you know, right below the three types of goals, why? Well, let's just simplify it as much as we possibly can. There's actually research showing that it can boost your performance by anywhere between 25 and 44%. This isn't just me talking. These are actually, this is scientific evidence. This is something that uh, is proven and used. And so 
I want you to think for a moment, what could, even on the low end, what could 25% improvement be for you on the pitch? And I'm gonna let you guys answer that on your own, but just think about that as we move forward. And in addition, I know these three types of goals might be a little bit new to you. I want you to familiarize yourself with it. And I've shared access with your coaches to give you goal setting worksheets to build out and design your own plan. Highly suggest that you do this with your coaches together because at the same token, this has to be a group effort, something that's reasonable, something that's challenging yet attainable. And so as I dive in quickly into the three types of goals, the first one, process goals. The second one, performance goals. And the third one, which you're probably most familiar with, outcome goals. And so I, I put together quick examples for you, but I just want you to think about this from a perspective of everyone has goals, you should at least. Your outcome goal might be to compete in the World Cup, or your outcome goal could be to get a scholarship to play in college. Whatever the case might be, these three types of goals are the building blocks. And I want you to make an even bigger point of emphasis on process goals, because it's what you can control on a day-to-day -day basis. And I say this because, let's just be honest, if you have a goal, a performance goal of scoring 10 goals in a season, how are you gonna do that? And yes, you can talk about, I'm gonna work hard, but let's get a little bit more specific. Let's talk about what you're gonna do on a day-to-day -day basis. And so, for example, in order to you know, achieve 80% shots on goal, you're gonna practice, maybe even after practice, making 50 shots with the left and the right foot. And you can do that five days a week. If you do that every single day or even five days a week, what are the odds that you can actually score 10 goals in a season? It goes up. If you score 10 goals in a season, what are the odds that you can get a college scholarship or that you can get all conference recognition or that eventually one day you can actually play in the World Cup? So again, I won't take too much time on this, but work with your coaches. These worksheets are given to you, use them understand that they're the workhorse. There's so many different skills you can do, but the one that's actually gonna make you really improve the quickest is goal setting without a doubt. Bree, if you wouldn't mind going to the next slide. Great. And so this is gonna be our last activity before I hand it over to the guest speaker. Now with this one, I want you all to actually try this out with me. And this is a relaxation exercise, it's called box breathing. And the reason I say this uh, is because box is four sides. So before we jump into you know, doing the exercise, I wanna give you a quick understanding of how to do it, why to do it. Now, this is specifically geared towards helping you achieve a more focus, more concentration. And I say that because as an athlete, if you're getting ready for a competition, if you're getting ready for training, if you're getting ready for a test, I got nervous, if you're anybody like me, really any important moment that you can think of, practice this. And so the whole purpose of how we do this and why it's becoming more and more prevalent for athletes is because Navy SEALs do this before missions. It helps them calm down. It helps them stay focused and perform at their best. But it's not just Navy SEALs. Now it's athletes. And so how we do this is I'm going to ask you, I'm going to be your guide. You're going to inhale for four seconds. You're going to hold your breath for four seconds. You're going to exhale for four seconds. You're going to hold your breath for four seconds. So just a real quick one before we do it all together. Inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four. Hopefully that makes sense. And we're gonna do this for one minute. I know your time is valuable. I just wanna really introduce it to you. But moving forward, I suggest you do this for two minutes. It's gonna help you guys out a lot. Again, anytime you're feeling a little nervous or you wanna be primed for success, try it out. So as we begin, do me a favor, do one out breath, just exhale real quickly. Now that you've done that, inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, inhale, two, three, 
four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, last round, inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, excellent work, awesome. Pat yourselves on the back. Uh, that was our first relaxation exercise. Uh, again, this is something that takes practice. Even if you do this right now, I'm sure most of you will probably say, I actually feel more relaxed and you should because this actually does lower your heart rate. It calms you down. It relaxes the muscles. Obviously, the more you do it on a regular basis, two minutes a day, if you can, you're gonna start noticing the benefits more and more. And so uh, I can definitely talk about so many different skills, but rather than me talk about it, I'd love to introduce a four-time Olympic athlete, uh, Milo Kavik, who I'm gonna read off the accomplishments real quickly, just to show you uh, he's done well for himself. He's an incredible athlete. He's somebody who's a coach himself today. I believe all of you can learn from him, but just so you know, this is a national high school swimmer of the year, a four-time Olympian, a three-time world record holder, a uh, 2008 Olympic silver medalist and a 2009 world champion. In a nutshell, this is somebody who's been at the top. This is somebody who's raced the fastest time in human history. I urge you all to you know, pay attention, learn from him, hear about his stories. And Milo, if you wouldn't mind, we'd love to hear your visualization story, your personal success story. Hey guys, uh, I'm not sure if you see me. Um, Danny, I still see you. But uh, yeah, you, you got your thumbs up. Um, I'm sorry to say that I can't see many of you, but uh, you know, Danny, that that box breathing drill again. I, I've known it before, and just for me to to do it, and what you see is obviously my car. It's just uh, just to go to say that you could you could do this anywhere, um, guys. Uh, I want to kind of circle back and 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 uh, and say that. You know, uh, once upon a time, uh, myself just is a lot of people that, that were successful in, in sports and, and anything in general. Um, there was a time when we were sitting in your spot, listening to somebody like myself or another champion. And, uh, you know, and, and sort of just, uh, it, it, I have to admit that, you know, there were times when it just seemed unattainable. But, you know, and, and, and when you talk to enough people and when you get a little higher level, you start meeting a lot of these heroes and a lot of these people that have done, been there and done that. And, uh, and, and a lot of times the stories that you hear is, is how they were just like you. And, um, and, in, and in one of many ways, how I was just like you and how to this day I'm still just like you is we all dream. Um, you know, during the day we daydream um, at night we dream and, and these dreams in, in a nutshell, all it is, is just, you know, images and, and scenarios in your head where you, you see yourself doing something very, very well. Um, how is visualization important? Visualization is in essence, it's, uh, it's seeing yourself do something very well that is important to you. Uh, you know, in, 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 in soccer, for example, you know, uh, it, could, it could be something as little as a really, really good pass to your teammate or, or doing, doing something, uh, seeing a scenario play out in your mind, which hasn't happened, but it's, it's a perfect lob shot or chip shot to somebody and, and uh, you know, it, it just works out. I think the important piece of this is whatever it is that you're daydreaming about, if, uh, if, if you're like most people, you see it working out for you. Uh, very rarely do you, uh, do you have something not work out for you in your own daydream just because you're in the driver's seat of your own dreams and, and you see things simply just playing out uh, in, in your benefit. And, and, and at the end of it, the, uh, the, the end goal is you celebrating. Uh, for me, growing up, uh, I was, I just remembered in class, uh, I would daydream about swimming. Um, and, 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 and I assure you swimming is a whole lot more boring than what it is that you're doing, but, uh, at the essence of it, it was just important to me. And, and it was where I was able to go and, and hang out with my friends, uh, do what I really like to do 
And, and at the end of the day, uh, just like you, I, I had aspirations of greater things. Uh, you know, when, when I was nine and 10, I wanted to race and compete with the 11 and 12 year olds. And when I was 13 and 14, I wanted to, to, to start racing with the, the kids that were older. And I knew what they were doing with results. And, uh, and as soon as I was good enough to race with them as a 13 or 14 year old, I, I started looking bigger. I wanted to, I wanted to compete with the college kids and then I wanted to be, you know, racing with the best in the world. And, 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 and the one thing that just sort of helped me along the way was just daydreaming about it. And, and what I truly daydreamed about, like I said, was just, uh, seeing myself in these scenarios competing against the, the, the people that I wanted to race and, uh, and, and me placing third and then fourth, uh, third and then, and then second, and then eventually winning. I, I recognize that I probably wasn't as good as, as, as many of them when I was daydreaming about it. But as I grew older, um, as I saw myself doing things better and better throughout my dreams, uh, the, 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 I was raising the bar and I just started to see myself literally competing with the best in the world. And, and, and then uh, when I was there, uh, in my mind, at least, I saw myself doing something which no one had ever done, and that was setting a world record. Uh, for me, setting a world record was just as good as it got. I mean, it, it was literally me doing what nobody in, 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 in human history has ever done, and I wanted to be remembered as the guy that did something that nobody did. Uh, I was lucky enough to do it three times. Um, some people never do, but What's uh, what's important, guys, is 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 not not uh, what's important is that you you truly want this goal, whatever it may be. It's got to be important to you. And uh, and and for me, I, I wanted to do it for 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 my friends. I wanted to do it for my family. I wanted to do it for my country. But the truth is, I wanted to do it really for myself, just to prove that I can do it. And, and to prove that I, I mastered this moment. And, uh, and, and guys, when you get to the top or whatever you think is your next top, uh, it's, it, it could be scary. It could be scary and it is scary unless you've done it a bunch of times and what better place to do it a bunch of times than in your own mind. You, through the help of a visualization, are gonna see yourselves do this perfect pass a million times before it actually happens. I've listened and I've read uh, I read articles about Lionel Messi doing it. He he would he would pass he would he'd do something with the ball and he'd already seen it a million times. But before he chose to do this certain pass or this certain move, he had visualized a field of players doing uh, finding themselves in specific positions to where he would want to do a specific pass or or a move. The way how it was important to me and how it worked out, and it didn't always work out, but the way it worked out was I, I would visualize myself going in what we in swimming called the ready room. Uh, and what they do is they put you in this little room full of, uh, you know, the finalists, and there were seven others. And I would go into this room and I would find myself with seven other people that were just as hungry as I was, that were just as good as myself. And they would keep us there for five minutes and everybody's nervous. Everybody's shaking and, and for me, what I would do is when I knew that everybody was nervous, waiting for that moment of realization, I would, I would just do something very, very similar to the box breathing drill. I would relax myself. My whole, my whole body would be very, very relaxed. Whereas in my mind, I would, I would be running the visualization, uh, the, 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 the simulation of what I wanted my race to play out and how I wanted it to look. So I would, I would be in a room full of these other people that, that wanted what I wanted. And I would literally almost just go to sleep. And in other words, I would do the box breathing drill to where I was just relaxing my body. Everything was just relaxed, including my neck, my face, and my shoulders just relaxing. But in my mind, I was playing everything out exactly how I wanted to do it minutes before my race. I would walk out to the starting block. I would literally see myself walk past the camera that was filming all of us uh, on live TV. And, and when they would come by, I would, I would, I would, uh, you know, I'd pat, I'd pat my national federation, uh, you know, logo, uh, which for you tomorrow could be your, your team. And, uh, and I would visualize myself patting down the block. It, it was still wet. 
and uh, and and I would I would I would literally see myself step up on the block. And and I knew exactly what I was going to do just because the minutes before that I saw myself do it. And a hundred times before that and more, I would see myself do it during my daydreams and even at night. And I would find myself jumping into the water and, and just letting, almost, almost letting myself watch myself going into this auto drive where I just let myself do what it, what I'd seen myself do a million times. Sure. I was in the driver's seat, but it was almost as if I didn't need to drive just because I had literally seen myself do it so many times. There were times where I would dive a little deeper than I wanted, but just like, you know, Danny had mentioned, you know, in, in, in the process, you know, uh, in the process and setting goals, guys, things are not always going to work out just the way you wanted, but because you've seen yourself make this small mistake or this, this, uh, this thing that didn't work out, I would go to practice those days and I would, I would make sure that I knew what to do in the event that this would happen. So whether I would dive in a little, little, uh, little shallow or a little deep, I had a plan for it and I had seen myself do it and I worked on it in practice. In any case, what's, what's important is I would, I would go through this race and I would hit the first turn, the second turn on the second lap, the third turn. And then in swimming, because I swam the hundred meter races, we had four, four laps in the short course pool. But the, the idea was I knew that I'd be dying at the end. I'm tired. My body's not listening to me anymore. My legs have given, my head hurts. And, and this is where the visualization really paid off for me. When everything is failing, you should know guys that your brain, the, the, the frontal part, this is the prefrontal cortex. And basically it's telling you fight or flight. Everything's just not working out or is going downhill. You're wanting to give up. Your body and your brain is telling you, guys, hey, stop, take a break. Don't, you know, don't, don't go there. Or because you've seen it a million times and you and you've played this out, you have the other option, fight. And when you do it enough, guys, and you do the work and you follow the process and you visualize it many times, you know that this is what's going to happen. You know exactly how, how, how tired you are going to be at the end of the game and how much your team needs you. And this is where your brain says, no, don't flight or don't, don't run away. Fight this. You got this. You've seen yourself do this. You prepared yourself for this very moment. You know exactly what to do. Make a decision right now. Fight. And that's exactly what I did. And this is exactly what you're going to do every single time. And, and this happens, it, 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 you know, in the middle of the game, you know, you guys go into your, your halftime, your coaches give you your pep talk. And, and, and you know what, at the end of the game, sometimes it's, it's, it's enough just to look in the player, it, just your teammate size, or look at your, look at your coach and your nods, your coach is just going to nod at you. And, the, and that way with this nod, they're telling you, you got this, you prepared for this. You've seen this, you've worked out and worked at this. You know exactly what to do. It's just about doing what you've been doing a million times on the field, in practice, and also in your mind. And this is your moment. And I would go into this last lap. Everything is on fire. I know exactly what's going to happen. And, and for me, I knew that literally my, my vision's getting blurry. My hips are falling. And I know that in these moments where, where all the red lights are going off, I, uh, I, I, I tap into these emergency protocols, which I've worked on. When my, when my hips go, I know what to do. When, my, when, when I'm not able to hold the water anymore and push water back, I know what to do. I'm letting go of the water because I want to get to the top of my stroke just so I can take another stroke. And, and guys, the biggest part is, when, when uh, especially in the final moments of, of your game and, and in my races, I just knew exactly how I was going to feel. But what, what pulled me through and what got me through my, my toughest moments was that literal moment of celebration that I daydreamed about, partying with my, with my friends, my teammates, hoisting that medal or for you that trophy. And, and that's, what, that's what got me through it. In 1992, there at the, at the 1992 Olympics, they had this motto. It said, pain is temporary, pride is forever. And guys, 
it's at the end of the day, when your career's over, I hope a long time from now, what you're going to remember, what we say in swimming, it's not about the time you had. It's about, it's not about the, it's not about the time you went. It's about the time you had. And what you're going to remember at the end, ends of your careers is not that you won these championships, but how you won these championships and how you didn't give up on yourself and your teammates believed in you. You believed in your teammates and how you guys together hoisted that trophy and just had a great time. Again, for me, it wasn't about the time that I went. It's about the time that I had. And that's what you're going to remember at the end of the day. And the only way to get yourselves ready is to see yourselves in different scenarios many, many, many times. And for me, whether I wanted to or not, I saw these visions and I saw these simulations every single night. It was just that important to me because I really wanted to be the best in the world. Being the best in the world is not necessarily the goal, guys. It's being the best you've ever been. And you know what? If you do this enough and you hit enough benchmarks along the way, you're going to position yourselves to get to the next level and then want the next level and want the next level. For me growing up, I like to play video games and like any video game that you've ever played, whether it's uh, Tetris, you start at level one, you want to go to level two, you go want to go to level three and so on and so on to level 10 and then 20 and then 100. Imagine what it would be like if you were just stuck on level five. It wouldn't be any fun. You want the challenge, but the challenge is going to get harder. And as it gets harder, you're going to need, you're going to need your teammates. You're going to need to be better prepared. You're going to want to, you're going to want to meet that big boss or whatever that moment of, of tension is. And you're going to want to be ready. And you and the way you're going to know what to do is to see yourself coming to that moment and, and executing on what you've practiced on a million times again at practice in the game and in your mind. All right. That's my little story for you. Um, I'd like to open this up for, for Q and a, and if, uh, if you guys have questions, I'd, I'd love to take it on. If you have anything for Danny, great. But, uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, I, I look at you and, and again, I'm not looking at you cause I can't, but I, I just want you to know that, uh, your heroes, whoever that may be once upon a time, they were just like you just didn't know if they could, but they had dreams. And I think dreams it's, it's a great place to start. Yeah, so guys, if you have any questions for them, you can go ahead and use the Q&A feature, which we've used before, or if you want to raise your hand, you can do that. Um, it looks like we do have a question. I'm trying to pull it up here. And let me um, stop sharing and see if I can pull it up. Okay, this question um, asks, is there anything that they should be doing after a game? And I'm guessing this is talking about like the visualization stuff that you guys were getting into. Um, Do you wanna take that one? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, after a game, guys, uh, it's, it's human to feel something after a game. Uh, I, I, think, I think it's important to, to embrace whatever that is that you feel. Uh, you're either going to feel joy or you're going to feel, uh, you know, you're going to feel disappointment. Um, I, I think it'd be frustrating and uh, it worries some if you felt nothing. Whatever you're feeling, embrace it. Uh, if you want a game, you know, uh, definitely, definitely uh, take that W and, uh, and, and have fun with it. But some of the best advice that I had ever had ever gotten was you always want to fight to be in this uh this golden middle. Uh, when you're a winner, you're going to feel high. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want your coach or somebody to, you know, reel you back and, and pull you back down to the middle and say, okay, we won the game. Great job. But what did we learn from this? What did we, what can we do better? Because there's always something to do better. Have a good time, embrace it, but watch video talk to your coaches about certain moments about what it is that you did mentally. Uh, you mentally gave up on an opportunity to chase for a ball or for a pass, or, you know, there was something inside of you that, that just wasn't engaged. So uh, that's something to talk about and to think about, um, you know, uh, other things to, to, you know, do, do after a game is, uh, is to express everything that it is that you feel. Uh, I think it's important to process your feelings, uh, whatever it is, good or bad. But, you know, uh, it, it, it's important if you're feeling high, 
to have somebody to reel you down just to that middle, just so that you can have a clear conscious and clear picture of what, what it is that you, what it is that happened, uh, good and bad. And, uh, and if you're, if you're in the gutter, uh, what you want is, is similar with your coach and your teammates to pull you back up to that middle guys being in the middle is a really, really good place. It gives you clarity. Uh, and, and I think, uh, I think talking things out is important because it helps you move forward in, in, in a very productive way. Great. Great. Um, so we have two more questions that have come in again, guys, if you have questions, go ahead and use the Q and a feature and we'll read them out. Um, so this next one, what did you do when you were met with a scenario you've never visualized before? Uh, <laughs> such a good question. Uh, guys, you know, uh, what can happen will happen. Uh, and it happens, uh, it happens all the time. Uh, for me, uh, I, my Olympic finish, if you guys look up, uh, Milo Kavik Olympics, you'll see that my, my, my Olympic finish wasn't the greatest. It wasn't why I lost, but you know, uh, things do happen. And, and I never, I never visualized that outcome. But, but in any case, guys, um, with my age and my experience, I started to fine tune every single moment, just about, uh, in every single scenario that could possibly happen, uh, at your age and where you're at right now, you're going to find, you're going to discover that, uh, as things go wrong in games, uh, it's going to bug you. It's going to itch you. It's going to bother you. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to, you're going to see those scenarios in your head and think about, well, what is it, what is it that I could have done in that moment that I didn't do, or that my teammates didn't do. And, uh, and, and you're going to start processing that picture and that scenario in your mind. The next time you visualize it and you're going to see yourself do things better or do it more right. And, uh, and, and I welcome you to share that with your team or to, to share it with, uh, to share it with your coach. But in any case, as you get older and more experienced, you're going to have more of these scenarios where things didn't work out and you're going to see the scenarios, how they worked out better. And then, and also two or three different scenarios, how it could have also played out. So I think what's important again, to go back to the first question, what do you do after your game? Talk about it, good or bad, process it and, and take these moments and let it fuel you just because you don't want to, you don't want it to happen again, again daydreams dreams we see ourselves doing things very very well and uh because you're going to talk about it a lot with your mom and dad your teammates your friends your coaches you're going to process that moment and figure out well what could i have done and 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 find several different ways where you could do it better and then when you go to practice you're doing some drills because this is what drills are we're practicing for 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 game experiences in, in practice, you're going to find opportunities to where you're going to remember that one piece, that one thing that whatever happened, and, and, and you're going you're gonna to do it right. You're going to make it right in practice. Does that make sense? Yeah, I thought that was great. Um, so it looks like we have one more question here. Uh, this is a good one. When did you first realize that you had the opportunity to go to the Olympics and how? Um, the first opportunity I ever had was, I was just a kid, you know, um, I, 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 I'll, I'll tell you, like, I was good, but I wasn't always good. Uh, you know, I was good in my age group or, or whatever category, you know, you're, you're in. And, uh, and, and all of a sudden, like, you know, when I was 11 and 12, I started uh, wanting to race with the 13 and 14s. And, uh, and then when I was good enough to race the 13 and 14s, uh, and, and when I was 13 and 14, I wanted to be racing against the 15 and 16 year olds. And all of a sudden they started opening up these, these open competitions where, you know, you go and you don't race with your, with your age group, you, you rather, uh, you just race with whoever's there. And these are called open competitions or open championships. And, uh, what was really, really cool was, uh, and, and, and I bet you can relate this. To, to yourselves and your experiences you just want to start working out with older people that are faster better they know tricks and uh and my my favorite thing about watching pro athletes and their their post-game experiences or post-season experiences or just like youtube conversations they would always talk about how they would always go and 
work out with somebody better than them. And, and that's what I think is so cool when you are like on your regional level, when they start having like these all-star games and these all-star workouts or like you want to go and work out with people that are just better than you. Yeah. They're going to kick your butt. They're going to do things better than you. But the point is you want to go and you want to, you want to, you want to work with them because they know more, they're better and they can teach you something. And that's exactly what I did. I started racing as better people. I started working out with better people. And I started asking more questions because I wanted to keep racing and I wanted to be better on their level. So, so when did I know? Uh, I think I was like 15 or 16 when I thought like I might have a chance. And I did go to the Olympics when I was 16, but I ate it. it. It didn't work out. But when I went, I was so nervous. And when, and after my first competition, I, I first Olympic games, I didn't do great results wise. But when I did, I, I went and I, and I had that experience. I realized, man, like the, the weight and the gravity of this opportunity was just so heavy, but it was really just heavy in my mind. I went there to break that ice to show myself that, you know what, it's not as scary as it really seems and that I could do this. And that's sort of the gift of you guys going to a championship game, winning or losing, but especially when you lose, you go to that game and you realize like, holy cow, that wasn't truly as, as scary as it was. Pressure is important, guys. No doubt you need it for life and not just the game. But when you go to there, you'll realize, you know what? Um, an Olympic champion came to me before that Olympic final. And uh, it was the night before. And what, you know, I was eating in the dining hall of the Olympic, uh, of the Olympic village. And he tapped me on my back and he told me, uh, I, I knew of him. He didn't really know me. But he, he knew who I was because I, got, I was in position. And, uh, and, and he tapped me on my back and I turned around. I was like, oh, my God, it's Peter Van den Hugenbund from the Netherlands. And he said, hey, Kavik, I know what you're thinking. I'm like, what? And, he, and he's like, I know what you're thinking. Stop. I'm like, what's that? He's like, you're thinking about tomorrow's race and, and how nervous you are. I'm like, Peter, it's sort of right. Like, uh, it's, it's my chance. And he said, stop it right now. And what I want you to do is remember why it is that you're here. And I thought to myself, and I said out loud, to win? He said, sure, to win. But that's not really why you're here. You're here, first and foremost, because it's fun. Throughout your whole life, all up until this moment, you've dreamed about this moment, you've visualized, it, visualized this moment, and you get to be here because you, you just went through the process. But more importantly, you would not have made it to this moment today if you didn't have fun along the way. So you know what? When you go out there, know how the whole world is going to be watching. We're, we're all wanting to be in your spot. And, and don't, rem don't never forget for one moment that you're, you're here and that you want to go to this, this opportunity because it's fun. So guys, know that when you get on that pitch, everybody is watching but it's everybody watching because they want so badly to also be in your spot. They want that opportunity and you deserve that opportunity. You earned it because of all that work, because it was fun. You kept doing it because it was fun. So I encourage you, no matter what, when it gets tough, when it gets ugly and you don't like it, you're doing it because it's fun. And because the end result, when you succeed and you will, you're going to do it with your friends and you're going to have fun with, with your most important people. And guys, there is nothing more fun than that. That was a great answer. Um, we actually have one more question if you guys have the time for it. Sure. Um, so this, this last one's kind of a little more geared towards the environment that we're in right now, but it says, hi, we just had a four week break for COVID cases on our team. What is your advice for building back confidence in a young player who has to work so much harder to get back physically to where they were before they had to stop? I, uh, Danny, you could take this. I, mean, I could take it. Uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll say that uh, you should know that just about everybody uh, is in the same boat. Uh, we work to different degrees. Um, guys, there's, there's always a way where there is a will, there is a way, uh, is, as far as, as far as getting back in shape is just sort of the process, you know, you just sort of do it. Uh, you know, you just sort of bite the bullet and just kind of go through it. 
Um, because you're so young, it, it's not going to take you very much time to bounce back. But, you know, I, I would encourage you that, you know, whenever, whenever you, uh, you know, whenever you have the time, just uh, whenever you got some extra spare time while you're waiting for your parents to come pick you up, just uh, do drills in the parking lot, you know, play with the ball and, and just do something that, that you actually enjoy doing. I'm not saying go just run laps around uh, the field. Uh, work on the small stuff that actually you do enjoy. And, uh, and, 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 and the, and really the truth is, uh, as long as you enjoy something, it's not much, uh, it doesn't feel like a job. You know, when somebody tells you you have to do something, you don't want to do it, but you know, uh, people, people just get better in overtime. Uh, you know, everything that you do in, 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 in overtime, uh, after practice, is just going to help you even more. And, uh, and guys, uh, I encourage you as soon as this is over to, to YouTube the video of Kobe Bryant and his story, Dear Basketball. It is literally a five or six minute movie, a cartoon movie of everything that we're talking about when he was a kid and how he literally on his bed, he daydreamed about shooting and, and making shots and, and just daydreamed about things just working out. Um, and, and, and you know what? It's dreams that drive us. If you're out of shape right now, trust me, if you dream it, if you want it, your body will find a way to give it to you. But you just got to keep dreaming and just keep your eyes on that far goal. And along the way, just sort of have fun. Um, and, and again, having fun with it is just seeing yourself do things right and then executing on it. Great. That was such a great answer. Guys, thank you so much for answering those questions from them um, and, and giving them this presentation. This was a lot of good stuff for them to think about um, and to hear from, you know, somebody that's so accomplished as yourself. Uh, do you guys have anything you want to say to them to close us out? Danny? Yeah, so first of all, thank you all so much for staying on this. So hopefully you got a lot of value in speaking with Milo or hearing Milo and having those questions. Um, take things one day at a time. We're all in the same boat. I will say to all of you, um, if, if you're not happy with where you are with your results, what are you doing differently? Change it, try something new. That's just really the whole thing about life. And I want to really emphasize that challenge for you all. Uh, I'm all about mental skills training. Amilo has obviously used it. There's no, there's never going to be a way to cut out the physical training needed, but the best way to really gain confidence is train hard. Um, your, your physical side, your mental side, your technical side, the harder you work, the more confident you're going to become. Uh, I thank you all for your time. I'm going to talk to the coaches about giving you all access to the Restoic app, which should be out early next week. It's going to be able to train you. With your phone, it's going to give you the why and the how. Everything is going to be explained. Why is this going to help me on the pitch? How do I execute it? We're, we're really excited to share it with you all. We've had great results thus far. Um, thank you so much for the opportunity, Bree, uh, Milo, thank you for speaking to the athletes. We're, we're excited to be a resource for you all as you hopefully, uh, continue to dream and chase your goals. Thank you guys so much. Um, players, we'll get that information out to you as soon as, as soon as we have it and give you guys, um, an opportunity to be able to reach out to these guys and use their app. So thank you guys. And, uh, we'll talk to you later. Thanks. Have a good night.